Amidst the pile of junk, Carolyn takes a breather and shares her thoughts on the spring cleaning results. Actually, I didn't know that there was so much junk in my house. I thought there were maybe like a few, less than 10. And it actually surprised me that I could dig out so much. I feel relieved because old things should be thrown away. And you know, new things could come in. <laughs> new gadgets. <laughs> But while she looks forward to filling up the space with shiny new gadgets, Carolyn is now more cautious about how she deals with her old devices. If I buy a new gadget right now, most probably I would have put the old gadgets back in the cupboard. But now I actually will think twice because it will accumulate one day. Carolyn has a huge mound of tech junk to contend with. She may no longer have need for her old gadgets, but her unwanted electronics could still have an afterlife. So now what? Her trash could just be another man's treasure. Online sites like eBay and Craigslist are a great place for reselling your unused goods. Here, people can sell and bid for anything from MP3 players to television sets. But if you would rather receive instant cash, then a second-hand store could be an option. The second-hand electronics market is a booming business. In Singapore, buy and sell retail shop Cash Converters takes in 18,000 electronic devices a month and manages to sell pretty much all of it. I think since November last year, we, we saw a, actually a spike in our purchasing. It's a sort of coincide with the economy downturn as well. And I think it also, sort of during that time, there was a lot of year-end sales going on. Uh, the big players are selling off cheaper electronics. Therefore, people are upgrading more. So they sell off the items to us. And people are not doing it just for the extra cash. I think people are more into the reduce, reuse, recycle concept. What they don't want to use may be good for somebody else. You don't throw it away. It's not a waste anymore. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Let me see what you have here. All right. Oh, OK, this is an Xbox console. You first. You After appraising what Carolyn has brought in, uh, they make her an offer. This gaming machine now, we can only buy at around 5 to $6. For the Xbox console, I will give you up to $40. The price may only be a small fraction of what you originally got the goods for, but that's more change in the pocket than if it stayed at the back of your closet. $210, madam. This is yours. Thank you very much. With a little cleaning up, Carolyn's old console looks as good as new on the display shelf. She walks away with some pocket money and her electronic devices get a new lease of life. Unfortunately, most tech trash ends up dumped rather than sold on. But attitudes are changing. A few green-minded corporations are giving consumers the option to recycle. Mobile phone manufacturer Nokia is scoring some green points. Environment manager Francis Chung tells us why. Nokia has the responsibility to make sure that all our unwanted um, mobile devices are collected back for recycling. We started our recycling programs way back in the year 2000. And then today, we have more than 5,000 of our service points in 85 countries that has a recycling facility for the general public to come in to recycle their uh, unwanted device with us. A 2008 global survey by Nokia reveals that only less than 3% of mobile phone users recycle their devices. One of the reasons um, is that most people are not aware that the mobile phone can be recycled. Uh, more so, uh, they are not aware how they could do it, you know, to recycle their the mobile devices. To combat this problem, they have launched a Recycle a Phone Adopt a Tree program. Mobile phones and accessories of any brand can be dropped off at one of these booths. For every phone you drop off, you will get a tree named in your honour. This booth is set in the heart of the National University of Singapore, and these students are giving it the green thumbs up. 
students, they often change their phones. So I thought this is a good way to dispose our phones responsibly. If every one of us recycles our handphones, we can prevent 217 million kilograms of carbon dioxide from being released into the air. That's equivalent to taking 4 million cars off the road for a whole year. What is in your mobile phone and why is it important to recycle them? We're visiting this recycling facility in Singapore to find out. Tess Am is an e-waste recovery specialist that deals with products like handphones, computers and printers. In 2008 alone, Tess Am processed 36 million kilograms of discarded e-waste. That's enough to fill 15 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Always wondered what your handphone looks like on the inside? We're taking one apart to show you. It's made out of eight different components and each part can be recycled. The plastic components taken from the phone covers and chassis are recycled into plastic pallets used in factories. The metal parts are resold as ingots. Next, the lithium-ion batteries. Normally impossible to recycle, they end up in landfills or are incinerated. Both bad for your carbon footprint. But here, they have a system that safely recovers the raw materials found inside. This process is so unique, it's the only one in Asia. But that's not the most interesting part of your communication device. It's these circuit boards. They contain your handphone's 24-carat secret. General Manager Joe Vong tells us how gold can be mined from your mobile. We will go through a series of uh, stripping and electrolysis okay, to, to, to extract surface gold. And we'll go through a refinery process whereby we're able to extract gold from this mix. And uh, once it's been extracted, you will have almost pure gold and almost pure copper. And both of this will be casted separately into various ingots for resale back to the metals market. Now, it does take 30,000 mobile phones to produce a one kilogram gold bar, but just imagine how much of that gold could have ended up in a landfill. Despite all the benefits of recycling, the amount of e-waste Tessam processes is just a small fraction being generated around the region. I would put it at no more than 10 to 15 percent because a lot of e-waste tends to be sitting forgotten in the storerooms. You know, and what we're seeing is really mainly the volumes coming out of uh, manufacturers' uh, operation. Executive Director Adrian Tan explains why recycling e-waste is the healthier option for the environment. 